What has Joseph Campbell taught you about becoming an adult? Joseph Campbell taught me two key things about becoming an adult that have really stayed with me. He said that the cave you fear to enter oftentimes holds the treasure that you seek. That idea has stayed with me because oftentimes it is that story I've been afraid to tell that has the meaning I've been looking for, the expression that I want. So many times the cave that I have feared to enter has been a cave um, of laziness. It's been a cave of commitment to my craft. And, and yet, as I have determined to enter that cave, I've seen magical things appear. When I say magical things, I'm referring to magical things within myself. See, in essence, that cave we fear to enter is always inside of us. It's not in the things we do. It's that place inside of ourselves that we're afraid to go. But this is what becoming an adult is about. Being willing to finally enter those deepest caves inside ourselves that we've long been afraid to enter. The other thing that Joseph Campbell talked about and this really was important to my growth as a human being and my own embracing of adulthood. It became a bumper sticker many years later, but he, he used this, this phrase, follow your bliss. It was advice that he used to give his students at Sarah Lawrence College every semester. And certainly that idea has had a number of critics that say, well, this is just talking about uh, you know, hedonism and uh, just whatever feels good, do it. But that wasn't at all what he was talking about. The sort of bliss that Joseph Campbell was talking about, it's that which brings you life. That which makes life full of wonder for you. That which draws your curiosity and causes you to think beyond yourself. Later, he, he joked that he, he said, I should have said, follow your blisters, because so often uh, it, it, it's, it's a painful road. Following your bliss is not always easy. Sometimes it can cost you everything. But it really is the only way to fully come into your full self. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what all of us are trying to do, right? We're trying to become the fullest version of ourselves that we can. Campbell said that he didn't so much believe people were looking for the meaning of life as much as they were the rapturous experience of being alive. I don't believe any of us are going to be on our deathbed talking about a great text conversation we once had. I don't think any of us are going to be on our deathbed talking about that time we binge watched the final season of Game of Thrones. I think we're going to be talking about those moments that we truly experienced what it was to live, not just to exist, but to live. That is what adulthood has become about for me not just existing, not just figuring out how to make it through the day, not just figuring out how to navigate this complex world that we live in, but what does it mean to live a life? That's what I want. How do stories help us become adults? There have been a number of great thinkers who have looked at how storytelling helps us become adults. Uh, certainly, you know, uh, Carl Jung uh, was, was instrumental in this, but there was a woman that worked with Carl Jung named Marie-Louise von Franz. And von Franz specifically looked at fairy tales and how fairy tales helped us become adults. And she went very deep into these ideas that set at the core of different fairy tales. 
And one of the things that she identified was that at the core of every significant and meaning, meaningful fairy tale was a certain element of danger. And she was concerned as society kept moving forward that we had become hell-bent on removing that element of danger from fairy tales because they were so often given to children. And in a sense, this work became very influential on uh, others who began to talk about the importance of the element of danger in stories in order to uh, help us grow and develop. Uh, later along comes a man named Bruno Bettelheim, and he writes a book called The Uses of Enchantment. And in this book, he also talks about how fairy tales are very important form of storytelling in order to help us become adults. Bettelheim says that when we remove the monster from the story that we share with children, we rob that child from the ability to learn how to confront the monster he's most scared of, that that lives inside of him, that monster that he really gets to know over the course of his life. I think beyond just fairy tales, stories, they allow us the opportunity to imagine a life beyond the here and now. They allow us to imagine a life that could be for us. In many ways, I go to the movies to see stories that are not just inspirational, but aspirational. I begin to question who I could be as I watch that story. I think at the, at the center of every great story is an invitation for the audience to begin a conversation with themselves. Great storytellers uh, are, are not those who necessarily cause an audience to set and become completely zeroed in on the storyteller. But a great storyteller allows the audience to become zeroed in on themselves. This requires the death of your own ego as a storyteller. But here's the thing. People are not interested in how great we could be as storytellers. They're not interested in how great we are as a writer, as a story crafter. People are interested in how great they could be. And the stories that we create, the characters that we allow them to step into, if those characters, if those stories open up a place inside of them that causes them to begin to imagine how great they could be, then we've really done something as those who create stories. We think of the quote, kill the boy, Jon Snow. Winter is almost upon us. Kill the boy and let the man be born. What does this quote stir up in you? It's essential that the younger person in every one of us has to die. However, they must die so that they can be reborn. The mythic cycle is all about death and rebirth. If the boy dies in me, it's only so a new boy can be born within me. And yes, in some sense, there's a maturation process of becoming an adult that I leave behind childish things. However, there's also a discovery of new things in life where I become a child all over again. In some sense, I am re-entering my boyhood. I'm re-entering childhood with every new relationship that I develop with every new person that I meet, and with every new story that I tell. 
One of the reasons that I think that's important is because we want fresh eyes. We want to see the world differently. We want to tell a story in a different way than we've ever told it before. So it becomes important that I'm willing to let that boy die, that the man might live, but also so that that boy can be reborn and a return of childlike wonder rises up within me whenever I'm willing to let that boy die.